my name is Tassin Kamal and I work in the medical devices industry as a senior regulatory scientist. So I help people bring their medical devices into the market. That can be Australia, USA, Europe, like mo almost all jurisdictions. So what that means is that I have some knowledge about regulations, how medical devices are regulated, and also like I understand how you can develop your organization following ISO standards. So that means you have a developed quality management system. And because I have an engineering background, that means I understand technicalities. But today I was specifically focusing on software as medical device. So have you heard of this term? Like robots. robots yes sort of but because robots are like they need some physical structure as well so they won't fall under the definition of software but you're right like you need software to run robots right so that's a very good guess um, so software as medical device is you understand there's so many software developing right like fast growing um, many software are being developed on phones to be used as apps now what happens is that there are specific type of software that can tell you whether you have cancer, say. Right? Then what it is doing? It is giving you, it is serving a medical purpose and giving you some sort of diagnosis. If a software can do that and it doesn't need a hardware to make the decision. Is that all um, from a lot of research and putting that information in? So you could do a lot of research. Sort of, but also like the software can itself have like processing capacity, right? It right, can yeah, you can use current. algorithms, yeah, yeah. yeah. You can develop codes yeah. that can do that, which is what we we have come to, right? Artificial intelligence and machine learning. What they do, like you put in a lot of images and then it does some diagnosis or prediction even, right? So prediction is like it can help you prevent. So that is like, so there is a regulatory medical device definition is that like if a device can treat, cure, diagnose, mitigate, or prevent a medical condition, then it's a medical device. So that's, and then software that can do it by itself without the help of a hardware, then it's a SAMD, software as medical device. So that is a technical definition. So um, there are other type of software so for example, a soft, the, the one she gave an example, like in a, surgery, in a surgery room, if a software is being used to control a robotic arm that is, being hel that is helping in the surgery, that software is helping a surgery, right? But it doesn't have its own medical purpose. It's just controlling the robot, right? So then it is a software in a medical device. So it's another technical definition like SAMD, SIMD, so um, as a scientist, I can just, um, because I have software background as well, so I can quickly give some examples of uh, what sort of technologies are currently used. As I said, AI, ML, artificial intelligence, and machine learning. That is very new buzzword, right? Everyone uses that. Then also every market, right? Financial analysis. But in medical devices industry, it's very important, like any software you are developing, if it has a medical purpose, then it needs to be done very rigorously. Like so, in at each step, you have to do risk analysis, and then of course you need to make sure it's safe. So risk benefit analysis is very important for developing this sort of software. Um, there is another buzzword IoT, right? Internet of Things. So SAMD uses Internet of Things, right? Like. For example, I thought this example was better, but I forgot to use it before. <laughs> so my Fitbit, it's not a medical device, but now it is. You know why I bought this Fitbit? To do ECG. Every now and then, if I have a chest pain from heartburn, I take the cover off and I do the ECG in 30 seconds. Now it's a medical device. Like the ECG app itself is a medical device. Uh, no, it doesn't. It just do heart rate. Yeah. And then, so that what does that mean? That someone had to write an app. So what happens is that there are sensors that uses heat and looks at my fluctuation of the heat and then it track, cal calculates, right? Using an algorithm, it calculates and lets me know. Well, every time it tells me that, yeah, you have a normal <laughs> heart rate rhythm or something like that, right? It never said bad thing, but it's supposed to say irregular heart rhythm. 
with BD set, if I have irregularity in my heart rhythm, it will give me a notification. Oh, no, because yeah. it's different to your normal. Exactly. So, so it's exactly, right. right. And that's why it's a SAMD, like yeah. software as yeah. medical device. Yeah. And um, so, yes, like I thought that this is not interesting because I am a software, I have been doing this for 20 years, but um, if. <laughs> I mean, I started. I studied software engineer. <laughs> no, so that's why I thought it wasn't interesting. But I can say that how, what sort of other technologies that are being used. Like, if you want to develop a software as a medical device, you need to care about the whole development life cycle, and each, at each step you need to do risk analysis, which I already said. But it's also important to fast start with an intended use, like what you want your product to do. So, so with a software, it can do many things, as you know, right? You write a few pieces of code, but you don't want to show display anything to the user. So it's a soft mobile app. It doesn't tell me that I have sleep apnea. So then it's not a medical device. If you want it to tell me that I have sleep apnea, then it becomes a medical device. So those sort of distinctions initially important, especially also because you want to create classification. Like a Band-Aid is a medical device, also a defibrillator is a medical device, but they are not in the same category of class, high risk or low risk, right? So that's also important to think about when developing software as medical devices as well. Um, and then I was reading that it, for this presentation I had to read and learn. So I read that you need to, you can do like these days people do a lot of agile, to, how do you run the project? So when you're running, it's agile is a project management approach where you use like, so especially in software world, you just break your code into small segments and run testing. So that helps, like you can debug quickly, right? And, and sometimes you can automate the testing processes. So each small piece of chunk that you have chosen is called sprint. So that's why it's called sprint. Like you can sprint the process of testing the software. And also people these days use DevOps, another buzzword. So DevOps is your developing team and the operational team run parallelly. So that helps, you know, in the software industry is very important what happens. You have small change, you want it to release quickly, right? So you don't want to wait six months for your the operational team to process technical regulatory stuff. So that's why you want them to work co I mean, in parallel, so then it's DevOps is helpful, sort of project manager. And there are, of course, different ways to so do it. So you rely on a lot of things to help you do your research, like you, all these other little things that are developed. To, to, like you said now, like a, is that like a shortcut? So um, other yeah, so have done research, so you, you can do research. Uh, further, that's a very good question, actually. I think you are heading. So if you're talking about like for a software development, so that yeah. is like people use repositories, right? Someone has done some code yeah. and then you pull it from the yeah, repository. That's, that's a I mean, git, yeah. GitHub. Uh, so GitHub is an international resource of repositories. Uh, I have used that. Like if people. My son's a coder. He does like software development. I'm sure he so will understand. Sort of, some of these things are sort of resonating. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. That's why I know that you are you are keen. Yeah, I can yeah. tell. <laughs> so do you have to have some sort of medical because you're doing it for um, for medical? support, I guess. Mm -hmm. You have to have some sort of medical background as well? Or? So, um, no, no, not necessarily. But So the thing is, it has to be a big team of people, right? So yeah. a coder who, is, yeah. can, who can be a software developer, but they need, if you're developing software for a medical purpose, you definitely need to do your initial step is internet, internet use, right? Yeah. And then the next step is use case analysis or user need analysis. So you definitely need to talk to clinicians and doctors, yeah. patients, yeah. users, right? So they can give you the clear scenario. So a, for a software to become a medical device and be launched into the market, clinicians have to be involved yeah. at the, for testing of the software and so on. So was it interesting? I mean, if you want to ask any question, I'm happy to answer. I had no idea. You can ask about hardware as well. I don't mind. There's a lot goes on behind the scenes. Yes. Yeah, so yeah, so to something that you to probably just, I uh, know, oh, take for granted for one of a better analogy. Yeah. Where there's a lot of stuff that goes yeah. into, into that. Yeah. And a lot of people, you need a big team because yeah. specialists. So, for example, I am not the developer in this scenario. Mm. Although I have a background that I can do it, that's why I work actually. As a, my role 
is senior role, that's because I can provide input. For example, someone is using a laser, a, someone is using laser to develop a medical device in the dental industry, say for example. So if I want to give them some sort of advice, regulatory, I need to still understand their development process, like the engineering a little bit, so that when I have a science engineering background, I can help them with that. Um, yeah, so it, it, that means I'm not an engineer in that role, but still I need that background. Yeah, so it's a lot of work goes on behind even developing a class one product. Oh, Very interesting. Thank you. Thank I you. brought this, but we didn't get to use this. Anyway, You're thank you. <laughs> no, this is because I, I thought that I will tell that this is not a software as a medical. Oh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, there is a prop. Yeah, there is a prop. Anyway, thank you. If you have any more questions. Thank you. Yes, sir.